Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update for December 18th, 2020, the last of our year. Uh, Brian Babler and Grant Dewey join me from our Capital Markets Desk. Brian, I think we're going to start with you this week. Uh, this is a relatively light week in the new issue market, uh, very concentrated with a few big deals. What kind of activity did you see? Yeah, this week was uh, was pretty much the last week of the year for uh, for supply coming to the market. Um, it was still fairly robust. It might have come in a little bit lighter than expected um, because one of the larger deals, the billion plus uh, Texas deal for I-635 um, did get pushed uh, and is probably going to come back uh, in early 2021. Um, but overall, uh, you know, the headline number probably about ten and a half billion. Um, some folks are including the $2 billion uh, that Illinois borrowed from the MLF uh, in that number. So even if you're at $12.5 billion, but, um, you know, somewhere in the camp uh, that everybody was expecting. Definitely biggest drivers uh, were New York City and uh, UDC Dorm Pitts, uh, which came to market, um, did fairly well. Uh, you know, overall, the, the market continues to be really constructive. Uh, and uh, and we saw rates, you know, kind of steady uh, in the muni space and treasuries drifted a little bit higher. So uh, marginal outperformance on the tax exempt side of the aisle um, for uh, for BAM. We had a fairly active week and a pretty diverse one, uh, considering uh, what, what came to market. We wrapped about one hundred and forty million on the new issue side. Uh, we wrapped bonds in states, uh, including Indiana, Illinois, California, Texas, Louisiana, Pennsylvania. So it's kind of across the map. Um, some of the highlight deals that drove our volume uh, were 43 million Fort Wayne, Indiana RDAs. That was uh, 82 underlying rating and pr uh, priced by Stiefel. Uh, we also did 19 million taxable uh, for Macomb School District in Illinois. Uh, that was double A3 underlying rating. So we continue to see high, uh, high grade paper utilizing insurance, particularly in the taxable space. Uh, that deal was priced by First Mid State. And then uh, another taxable deal, 16 million for Savannah Elementary School District in California, uh, was A plus underlying rated and, and priced by Raymond James. So overall, uh, you know, a fairly busy week, uh, last of the year. There's really nothing left on the negotiated or competitive calendar um, for the rest of the year. There's a handful of deals that'll get priced between now and uh, and the next two weeks, but uh, but really uh, the market uh, kind of quiets down for the holidays. Grant, can you sum up uh, what uh, what you saw this quarter and then really what the sure. year is about? Thanks, Mike. Um, you know, as, as you point out, munis continue to perform well given kind of persistently low rates that we've seen, and, and there have been consistently strong inflows. So while while the year kind of reminded us that credit matters and that uh, the municipal market is essentially a credit market rather than a commoditized rate market. Um, we also are reminded that technicals really drive uh, our market uh, quite a bit. So, um, you know, uh, Ryan mentioned the Illinois, uh, the, the MLF, you know, that I think the last six months have been pretty strong. they have all had positive monthly returns. A lot of that, I think, was um, that confidence was initiated by the MLF, but, you know, it's probably turned out to be somewhat imperfect. I mean, Illinois borrowed uh, two billion uh, directly from the Fed this week at a rate of a 342, and we saw this morning. Um, I saw this morning that uh, Chicago uh, negotiated a one-year note deal with J.P. Morgan uh, directly uh, at a rate of a 195. So um, it, it 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 did backstop the market, the MLF, but I think that there were only you know a handful, really two issuers. Uh, that accessed it, and, and so I think, um, you know, it's it's not going to be um, uh, expires at the end of the year, but I just don't think it's going to be that big uh, a deal for the market. Um, and uh, so, yeah, BAM had, you know, we had a record year again as the pandemic reminded investors at Muni's uh, that there is quite a bit of credit, credit differentiation within Muni's, and so um, and we think that's going to continue uh, into next year. Uh, most of the most of the volume numbers are in the 450 to 500 billion range for 2021, which actually frames pretty well. Uh, I think Brian, we ended up at would end up around 465 billion or so this year. So we'll have another strong year of issuance, and uh, and with uh, some of the credit concerns, we expect a strong year for them. 
And you know the other big story, two two other big stories of the year. The first one is uh, the growth in taxable bond issuance. Again, most of those forecasts anticipate that that's going to continue into next year. Do you have a sense of uh, of where you think the breakdown is, and what what percentage of that uh, volume is going to come taxable? Yeah, um, Brian, I think uh, we probably agree on this, but uh, you know there is going to continue to be heavy refunding volume. Uh, we'll see some new issue, but I think states, you know, will have to balance that with uh, cost cutting. But uh, I think. Uh, about a third of the overall market um, is expected to be in taxables again next year. And, and uh, I think that's right about where we were this year. So I don't think anyone's calling for any kind of drastic move, but uh, it continues to be a very effective tool to advance or fund um, uh, outstanding tax exams. And, and I think we're looking for more of that. You know, one of the big stories this year has just been the I think the expansion of demand uh, in the municipal market and and the amount of supply and larger taxable deals, uh, you know, have really served to educate uh, investor base overseas, and uh, and so that has been you know a big positive for municipal issuance. I think that's completely uh, on point. Um, and the only other uh, comment I, I would add is uh, you know while while the taxable side of the aisle ebbs and flows a little bit and, and it's a little more subject to uh, to where rates are and, and spreads are. So it can kind of come and go um, relatively quickly. Um, you do see, you know, and, and we saw it at the end of this year in this final stretch, um, you know, where rates and particularly taxable spreads had widened out a little bit pre-election. Um, you saw that market kind of rip right back, um, you know, just in the last couple of weeks and, and spreads really compress, um, you know, probably as much as 25 to 50 basis points, depending on uh, the sector and, and rating category. So, um, you know, that, that market is a little bit uh, kind of um, more subject to ebbs and flows, but, but I think everybody's anticipating, like you said, in that uh, 30 to 35% realm uh, mm -hmm. of total supply, and it should be a meaningful part of our business. And when you're talking about overseas investors, uh, you also have to talk about the increased interest in green bond financing. We saw this morning that uh, as of today, there's now been a trillion dollars in, in gross green bond issuance uh, globally. Uh, and for this year, uh, the muni market's going to hit an all-time high, uh, probably close to about $15 billion. Uh, We've seen that in uh, the BAM Green Star space as well. Uh, we verified over a billion dollars of green bonds. That was the first time uh, we've done that since the program launched in 2018. Uh, so that's continuing to be a, uh, an interest. Brian, what are you hearing uh, on the, the dealer side as they're uh, looking for homes for green bonds? Uh, is the interest growing? Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, broadly everybody is continues to see progress in the space uh, in the muni world. Um, you know, I, I think people are still, uh, you know, looking to find, uh, you know, a trading differential. Um, really, the most apples to apples comparison. I think there was a, a San Fran PUC deal done uh, later this year uh, where you know there was a basis point spread uh, between a green series and a non-green series where you had identical coupons, maturities, uh, call features, all that stuff. So typically, it can be a little bit hard to uh, to find and define a, a true spread for green. Uh, at this point, most of the feedback is that, generally speaking, there's uh, more oversubscription for green, and it may open additional eyes and avenues of buyers um, that are kind of really looking for it. But Broadly speaking, uh, the, the majority of the, the dealer side is getting all the same feedback that, you know, SMAs are continuing to build it into their, um, you know, their uh, DNA and they're offering uh, tracks for green bonds and ESG and all that um, and all that stuff. So um, it's definitely uh, something that the buy side is very um, in tune with and, and really looking closely at. There is generally speaking, uh, very strong demand for it. We'll see if the market continues to evolve to a point where we see uh, a spread differential and, and a real um, you know, pickup in yield uh, on the issuer side for, uh, for green bonds, which you know, most likely is not very far away. That, that dynamic exists um, in, you know, in a lot of the uh, green bond space internationally uh, where, it's, uh, where the market is a little bit more further evolved. Um, so we expect that to continue to progress. Thanks, guys, uh, for your time again, and uh, we'll see you next year. All right. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thanks, Mike.
market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, and adding BAM insured municipal bonds to your portfolio is easy. Talk to your investment advisor, visit buildamerica.com, or look for BAM eligible bonds on the Perform Portfolio Management System. BAM. Build America Mutual.